Fedora has been around for quite a long time at this point, and it's become one of the most popular Linux distributions out there, and for good reason. It's actually really, really good. Now, I know a lot of people use it simply because it's very stable and it gets the most recent version of GNOME, but a lot of people also use it because it has the ability to get the most recent stuff that's coming to Linux, things like Wayland and Pipewire and all this stuff. In the next couple weeks or so, the next version of Fedora will be coming out, version 36. So what I thought I would do today is take a look at version 36 and see what's new, because I long-term reviewed version 35 and I found that I really enjoyed it. I even used GNOME for a, quite a while during that time and I just had a really good time with it. So let's go ahead and take a look at version 36 of Fedora. Now I will say that what I'm looking at now is the beta. This is not final release. But we're within the next 10 days or so, we'll be seeing the final release, so a lot shouldn't really change. So let's go ahead and jump in. So I have here a fresh version of Fedora 36 beta installed in Vert Manager, and I've updated it to the recent daily build, and it's actually been very stable over the last few days. I've been messing around with it now for a couple days, and I've found that it's been really good. Now, the biggest new feature that you'll find in Fedora 36, if you're going to use the standard version, is GNOME 42. Now, I've already made a video about GNOME 42, so I'm not going to go too in-depth in terms of the new features that you'll find in the new version of GNOME, but I'll hit the highlights. So probably the most wanted and interesting feature of GNOME 42 is actually the ability to choose dark modes. So if you go into the system settings, like so, you'll find an appearance section here, which has always been there. And, but now you'll be able to do something other than just change the wallpaper. Here you'll be able to choose a system-wide dark theme. Now one of the coolest things about this isn't that there's a dark theme. To that point I just say freaking finally. But what's actually cool here is how they've implemented it. So when you switch to the dark mode you can choose one of these dual wallpaper setup things where it will have one wallpaper for the light one wallpaper for the dark. So if we change to say this wallpaper here, you'll see, we can close this now, that we have a wallpaper here for the dark and we change to the white, we have now a different version for the light theme. Now, one thing that I don't think you can do and something that I haven't seen you have the ability to do is actually create these dual wallpapers yourself. So if I have a wallpaper here and I hit add pictures and I go to pictures, Actually, I think they're into downloads. So if I select this here and hit open, all it does is give me that wallpaper. It doesn't allow me to actually change it so that there's like a dual wallpaper. That would be really cool, but again, that doesn't seem to be an option. Hopefully, that's something that they add in the future. But anyways, that's the coolest feature that I found. Now, there are obviously tons of other different features that you should know about GNOME 42 in particular. There's some multi-monitor improvements. There's some multitasking improvements so you can choose between different hot corners and active screen edges and stuff back in the settings application which I probably should have kept open. There's a multitasking thing here where you can choose between the, the hot corner and the active corner. You can actually turn those off. You can turn change between dynamic workspaces and the fixed number workspaces which is something that you couldn't do before. There's new options for power management up here in the menu. And then there's the usual app updates that you'll see across the board. So there is an improvement to the GNOME Connections app, which I think is actually, they're calling this new, but they've had something like this before, I think. And it's used to remote access to other computers. There's improvements to GNOME Maps. The other big change that you'll see in GNOME 42 is going to have to do with theming. So for those of you who have downloaded GNOME Tweaks in the past and use it to change themes, a lot of themes that you would previously have been able to use will not work because they've updated to something called LibAdwaita. And the technological stuff behind this is beyond me, but basically what they've done is made it so that it's impossible to theme a lot of things that use LibAdwaita. Now some things will still work things that haven't been updated to use this new framework, but a lot of things won't work, especially the built-in GNOME apps. So that's one thing that you'll notice that might be a negative, but for the most part, it's actually, I think, a positive. Now, I know that's probably shocking for anyone who's watched the channel for any amount of time. I like theming, and, and I just said them taking theming is away is a good thing, but 
from the stuff that I've seen for GNOME 43, it looks like they're going to try to at least enable some customization through libadweta, libadweta, however the hell you pronounce it, I never remember. But the point is, is that they seem to be at least taking this in the right direction. Outside of that, you'll see a lot of GTK4 stuff here. That's not going to mean a lot to a lot of people. But basically what's happened here is you'll see things like this where before, like here in Nautilus, which hasn't been updated to GTK4, you'll see that there's like buttons around the certain icons. When you see a GTK4 app, those buttons aren't there unless you hover over them. So this is more, this is a GTK4 app. This is a GTK3 app. Uh, now there is a beta of Nautilus that has GTK4 enabled, but it's not being rolled out with Fedora 36 as far as I'm aware. Another thing that you'll notice is that they do have brand new wallpapers. So in, in addition to the dual wallpaper thing that they've got going on here, they have a few additions that they didn't have before. Specifically, this one here for sure is new. And obviously, it will change with the dark theme as well, which is kind of cool. It's an interesting looking wallpaper. Probably not one that I would choose, but it's, again, new wallpapers are always good. In addition to the stuff that you'll see visually, obviously, there's a lot of new stuff under the hood as well. So if you're a programmer, you're going to see updated versions of pretty much every language that has been updated since the last version of Fedora. And obviously for the rest of us, the thing that we'll care about the most is going to be the kernel. In this case, we're going to be seeing the Linux kernel 5.17. And as of right now, this is still the release candidate. So I'm assuming that they're going to switch to the stable version when this is actually released. Another thing that has changed is the screenshot functionality. So we now have something that looks like this. And you can obviously change what the screenshot looks like. And you can also take a screencast of it if you want to as well. So that'd be cool for creating GIFs if you wanted to do so like that. And you, you obviously can change to the whole screen if you wanted to do that. It's kind of nice. I'm not sure actually what the previous GNOME screenshot tool actually looked like, to be honest. I don't think I've ever taken a screenshot in GNOME now that I think about it. Odd. Anyways, the... Fedora Spins will also be getting the latest versions of all their software, so KDE, LXQt, XFCE will all see updates to the latest versions of those desktop environments. Also, LXQt has been updated to 1.0 in their spin as well, so that's something that has been long time coming. I know I saw something in the headlines just a couple days ago, or maybe it was today, about LXQt 1.1, so it's nice to know that that low-resource desktop environment is still being developed. And finally, there are some important technological changes as well. Things like OpenJDK being updated, Golang being updated, the GNU toolchain being updated. They've also switched to Noto fonts throughout several different languages so that there's more consistency throughout the entire system in terms of fonts, which is good. And finally, they've also enabled Wayland by default for NVIDIA drivers. So people who use NVIDIA cards, you'll be now be using Wayland by default, even in GDM. So in the display manager, that will also start using uh, Wayland by default for pretty much everybody. So if that's something that's going to affect you, you should know that. So for example, if you've decided to install Fedora and then install DWM, which is an Xorg based window manager, you would have to change GDM to use Xorg instead of Wayland because it won't actually work. It won't launch DWM, but that's kind of beside the point. We can kind of see the writing on the walls now. Wayland is definitely something that is here to stay, and they're switching to it. Like, Xorg on Fedora, it wouldn't surprise me if in a couple versions it's completely gone. It wouldn't surprise me. I know there are rumblings about it. I know they're talking about it. I don't think that they're there yet, but it's getting close, people. Like, Wayland, on Fedora at least, is something that they're 100% all in on, and they think it's about ready. Now, whether or not you think that is another matter entirely. So, that is it for this video. If you have questions about Fedora 36, you can leave those in the comment section below. You can follow me on Twitter at LinuxCast. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash LinuxCast. I'd like to thank my current patrons, Robert, Sid, Devon, Patrick, Fred, Kramer, Meglin, Jackson, Nevin, Tools, Steve A, Cyberger Linux, Garrick, Samuel, KB, TGB, Mitchell, J. Doug, Carbon Data, Jeremy, Sean, Odin, Martin, e, Andy, Ross, Eduardo, Merrick, Camp, Joshua Lee, Peter A., Crucible, Dark Windows, X, Primus, and PM. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I'll see you next time.